In this video we're going to look at using JSON data within Node-RED. Now JSON stands for uh, JavaScript Object Notation and it's an open standard file format. Uh, uses human readable text to transmit data objects consisting of attribute value pairs. That's the wiki definition. Now packaging data as JSON is a common way of sending data between systems. It's also a common way of storing data on systems. If you're reading uh, configuration files into Node-RED, you might find a lot of the time they're in JSON format, so you need to convert them into JavaScript. And JSON, although it started uh, life with JavaScript, is not restricted to JavaScript. There are functions uh, in all of the major programming languages for converting uh, from JSON format to an internal format. Now, in JavaScript, there are two functions that you'll use. They are json.parse and json.stringify. And the json.pass converts from a JSON string into a JavaScript object. So in data is a JavaScript object and the JSON string you pass to the json.pass function and you get a JavaScript object back. And the opposite is the stringify function where you give it a JavaScript object and it gives you back a JSON string. And that's usually when you're sending data out of the system and the parsing is when you're bringing data into the system. And we're going to look at using these two functions uh, in the function node in Node-RED. So let's look at our first uh, Node-RED flow. And what I've got here is an inject node and a couple of function nodes and the debug nodes so we can see the results. The first function node is going to create the JSON data. So here we start off with a JavaScript object here. And then we convert it into a JSON string and, then, and put it into the message.payload and then we return the message. So that JSON string gets passed into this function node and this function node uses the pass what we talked about just earlier and then it converts that from a JSON string into a JavaScript object which is p here and then we extract the temperature from there p.temp into the message.payload and we return it so we should print out the, the temperature. And let's just go back and we'll look at the node here. The temperature is 30, you can see it here, and the humidity is 80. So let's deploy that and we just inject using the inject node and you can see over here that We've got the temperature humidity. This is coming out of this node. This is converted into JSON format. And temperature of 30, which is coming out of this node here. As we see here, we just put the temperature into the payload and we get 30 coming out. Now, you don't need a function node to create um, JSON data. You can actually create it directly from the inject node, but there is a gotcha with it. And if I look at the inject node here, and we just create a JSON, and this is actually not creating a JSON string, it's actually creating a JSON object. If we look at it here, there's a topic test.s1 and a temperature of 20. And when I first did this, I expected the output of this to be a JSON string. And it goes into the function node. And the function node, the first thing it does, it expects a JSON string. So first thing it does is convert it into an object before it processes it. And let's have a look what happens when we do it. Let's clear that. And now we inject our data. And over here, you can see here, we got an unexpected token zero or o in the json of position one if you do a google search on that uh, which i have done here and it basically tells you that you've already got a json object uh, so you don't need to actually pass it so what's coming out of this thing here is actually a json object so we don't need to convert it from a json string into a into a javascript object so if i just then remove that by commenting out and, and I just take the payload, payload directly rather than trying to do a conversion and we deploy that one click 
clear that and do the inject again. This time we see our temperature and the temperature this time is 20. Okay, you might have noticed this node floating around up here. Now this is a JSON node which will actually convert between a JavaScript object and a JSON string and, and vice versa. And if we open it up, you can see here the action here is to convert between a JSON string and object, always convert to a JSON string and always convert to a JavaScript object. So if you leave it here, it will examine the data and decide whether it's a JSON string or a JavaScript object and do the appropriate conversion. Okay, so let's use it. And what I've done here is I've changed it so it's going to convert between a JSON string and object. So it's going to decide what it needs to do. And let's drop it into our flow. Now, I've edited this function here. So we actually send out the data. We don't actually convert it into a, a JSON string. We send it out as a, a JavaScript object. And I've modified this function here back to the beginning. So it's expecting a JSON string. So it's going to pass it. And I've just commented that out. OK, so now when I deploy it and I inject, you can see it's working. We got the temperature coming out of here. So this node here has converted our JavaScript object into a JSON string which then goes into our function, gets converted into a JavaScript object again by the pass function, and then we print out the temperature from that JavaScript object. Now I've showed you the use of the JSON node. Uh, very often I, I do the work in the function. If you're using the function, you might as well uh, just add the extra line to convert it between JavaScript and JSON and vice versa within the function. So I actually very rarely use this, this node, but it's useful to know that it does exist, especially if you're not going to use a function node. Okay, let's go on to a second example. And this time we're using the inject node and we're going, going to send in our JSON data. And this time we've got a, a bit more complicated data. We've got the topic, which is test S1. And we've got data, and the data itself is an object consisting of the temperature humidity. So to access this temperature, we need to access it as data.temp. And to access the humidity, we need to access as data.humidity. So that's done. And if we go to our function node, very similar to what we had before, I've commented about this because remember the inject node is going to send in a JavaScript object, not a JSON string. And we just take that and put it into P, the payload. Then I assign the payload, message of payload to p.data.temp. So I'm just extracting the temperature. If I wanted to extract the uh, humidity, I'd go p.data.temp. You can also use this format. You can see it here. I've just typed it in. It's using the square bracket format and the key in quotes, so data is in quotes and temperature in quotes. I could actually use a mixture of these two formats, uh, but it's easy to use one format or the other format. OK, I'm just going to comment that one out. And we're done. And now we deploy it. And let's run it. And you can see the temperature is 20. OK, we've looked at using the function node and the JSON pass and the uh, stringify functions. Now we're going to look at using the change node and we're going to look at using JSON Arta and processing the, the JSON data using that. So I've got the inject node and this is the same data we were injecting previously. This data is a sub-object and this time we're injecting it into a change node and we're looking at the results and I've changed this so as it's showing the complete message object and I'll show you why in a second and what I'm going to try and cover here is a couple of the gotchas that I, I encountered when I was doing this and it can be very frustrating when you you're doing this and it's just not working and I'm going to try to explain why there are the common mistakes that uh, I made uh, when I was doing it for the first time and still make uh, from time to time when I'm, I'm using this. So 
we're injecting into the change node and if I look at the change node it's just setting the payload uh, I've been testing this so that's there let's just get rid of it and I'm going to use the expression here format to process the payload and this lets you put the example message in here and test the the data so let's go and get the JSON data we take it from here which is a common thing to do so we just copy it control C it done go back to here edit it and we go into test and you can see here I'm extracting data dot temp you can see straight away the result comes out at 20 if I just go for the data then we finish up with the object here well that's working well now if I deploy this it won't work and it won't work because what's being passed into here is not just uh, that object there it's part of the uh, the payload object so what I really need to do is you is is include the payload so I can't extract it just as data.temp I really need to extract it as payload.data.temp and let me show you how you confirm that so this time I'm injecting into the message object and I'm doing this it's deployed first so if I just inject and over here what I want to do now is extract the message object so if you can see this thing here it lets me copy so I click there and it says value copied and now this time I go into the change node and I go into test and I copy that back into here and I'm copying the complete message object now you can see there's no matching result and there's no matching result because I need the payload in front of there and there it is comes out as 20 so now we're done so what we're using is we're setting the, the message.payload to, to payload.data.temp and we just pass it on to the debug node so let's clear that and deploy it and we'll inject again and you can see here the payload comes out as 20 this time the, that payload is the object which is that one there and this bottom one here is this one here it's the output of this node here okay so that's how to use the JSON expression editor as well as using a in, within the change node as well as using a function node to process JSON data and so the last example I want to cover is what we're going to use there is we can actually send data, JSON uh, data out so our examples we've gone through have been processing incoming JSON data converted into a JavaScript object and extracting values from it this time we're going to go create the J JavaScript object and then we're going to convert it to a JSON string and we're going to send it out so this function here is a, a function that you might find useful it takes incoming data and it averages the data finds the maximum value of the data and it finds the minimum value of the data and it periodically it converts it into a JSON string and sends it off so let's add a couple of nodes in here to inject some data into it okay here's our flow and I've created a couple of inject nodes here to inject the values of 2 6 and 8 so our minimum should be 2 and our maximum should be 8 and this is the function node and I'm using two context objects one is called data and the other is data2 now data is the values that I actually want to be transmitted out and we're going to convert that object into a uh, JSON string to send out and data2 is storing uh, temporary data that I, I don't need to transmit out so that's why I've separated them into two objects I'm using a fi 5 second period I did have it set to 15 seconds but for a demo it takes too long it's amazing how long 15 seconds is when you're waiting for it so we get our date and we get a present time now is d dot get time so we've got a present time and we've got a series of tests here so if the value isn't set if it's undefined then we set it we set the count to zero uh, 
we've got a sensor ID, we've got a sensor type, we've got the maximum value, if it's undefined we set it to the payload, and we've got a minimum value, if it's undefined we again set it to the payload, and the average, if it's undefined we set it to zero, and the start time, if it's undefined we set it to now, which is the current time. And we've got a counter, this is stored in data too, remember we're not going to send that out, and we increment the counter, the counter is used for the average, so if the count is not equal to zero, then we have this. If the count is equal to zero, then the average is basically the payload. And I've got a log message here to log some data for debugging. Now, if the payload is greater than the maximum, then we set the, the new maximum to the payload, and we do the same with the minimum, but in reverse. Now we check the time and if the time's up then we send this data out so we convert our data into a JSON string using the stringify. We set the payload to out, we clear our data and we clear our data too and we store them back into the context object so we're going to start again on the next cycle and then we return the message. Now if it's not equal to the if the time's not up then we just store our data back into the respective objects and we return a null so nothing gets sent out of the node. Okay so that's the function. So we deploy it and now I inject a couple of values in here And you can see over there it's produced an output and so you can see it's maximum of eight minimum of two and the average of 4.8 but this is a, a JSON string and no normally you would be passing this on to MQTT or something else and sending it out or even or storing it maybe into a into a file now the last thing I want to show you comes as a result of a question that I had on a, a video on uh, on YouTube and one of the viewers was trying to decode this data and this is what the data he sent me and he was trying to extract um, I think it was the temperature or the humidity from this uh, JSON object and you can see here we got the topic we got the payload we got quality of service and what he was trying to use was uh, payload.topic uh, payload uh, QoS etc pay, payload.retain and some of it worked and some of it didn't work uh, especially the payload now it's difficult to, to tell but this is actually this payload is a JSON string and it's uh, happened to me before in another context when I was doing some work with Python and I finished up encoding it twice as a JSON string and it, it actually gets uh, quite confusing so what what I'm going to show you is the steps I went through to actually uh, decode this uh, you might find useful and what we're going to do we're going to use actually the command line and remember node red is a node application and so you've got node on your machine so we just go into the node command prompt and before I do that I'm just going to copy this and now I finish with that let's go to our command prompt and we go node And now we we paste our object in there and to do this I just right click here and paste and it goes in there and I just type s and you can see it there so if I want to get the topic I just go s dot topic if I want to get the payload s dot payload quite straightforward now if I want to get the time so let's convert it into a JSON object using the pass function and now we can get the time
and we can get the humidity and the humidity is actually part of this object so we have to include that so we go p dot a m two three o one dot there we are thirty three you might want to play around with that i I find it very useful the the node command prompt for testing things out so so that brings us to the end of the video if you've got any comments then please leave them below if you like the video then you click on the like button below and if you want to know, know when I post new videos to the channel you can always subscribe and feel free to share it on social media if you use social media and until next time goodbye <laughs>